Hi friends. In this video, we're going to learn how to take a regular baseball and disassemble it and turn it into an embroidered baseball. So these are some supplies that we're going to need. Obviously a baseball. Synthetic is best. I don't recommend leather only because it's, unless you're leaving the the uh, markings on it. If you are, then it doesn't matter. Uh, you're going to need some needles, the curved upholstery needles, some little scissors so we can snip all these laces, some flat waxed cord. And these are what I use. You can also use um, just like this kind of, I think it's crochet thread. You could use that also. You can use embroidery thread or embroidery floss, uh, some push pins, and you're gonna need some pure acetone. I get this from uh, Sally Beauty Supply, but you can get it, mm, I think at Lowe's at Home Depot. Um, and then of course, the template that you're gonna use for your ball and whatever designs you want, and of course, an embroidery machine. So let's get started. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and snip all these st stitches, all the laces, because we don't need these. And we're not gonna re reuse them, and there's really no way to get them out so it's nice and clean. All right, and once you get everything out, before you remove your panels, it's a good idea to get a marker and we're gonna mark So this one I'm gonna do an X and then I'll do an X here and then I'm gonna flip it over and this side, I'm going to do an O, and then here I'm going to do an O, and then you can also do some little trace lines, and that way you can really line it up much easier. when you're ready to put it back on. And then these sides, you don't have to do these sides, but I do. And I'm gonna put a four, only because it's easier to see than the other numbers for me. And then obviously you don't have to do it on the other side because everything else will have matched up by then. But I do like to go and put the lines roughly. All right. So once you have once you have all that done and labeled, then I'm gonna pick all these red parts, all the torn up laces parts. I'm gonna take all that off. And then we'll go ahead and, um, and get the ink off. All right, now that we have the ball taken apart, and some people, if you don't want to do the lines and you know trying to match up the panels and all that stuff, you can literally take the strings off. There's just a layer. Let's see if I have a ball that doesn't have a string on it. Well, I thought that I did because I took 
the strings off of a ball. I'm not exactly sure what I did with it. But anyhow, you can take all the strings off and then you don't have to worry about lining it back up and stretching it and all that stuff because it, it kind of, um, you know, it makes the ball just a little bit smaller so you can get these on there without having to use pins and all that stuff. But uh, just for the sake of the video, because some people don't like to do that, um, so we're just going to do it this way for now, but just keep in mind, you can take all this, all, all the string off and still have just the ball core and then put these back on and they fit perfectly. So you don't have to worry about stretch them, but I'm going to show, uh, all the extras just in case, you know, you don't want to take the time to pull all that extra stuff off. So again, make sure you're using pure acetone. Do not use fingernail polish remover because unless it's like a super high concentrate of acetone, um, because using that um, doesn't get the, the goop off. And I'm just using a regular cotton ball, and I just go in just little circular motions, and it just takes it right off. And then I'll take a clean cotton ball and do it again, just to make sure that it's not you know there's nothing else on there all right so that looks pretty good so set that one aside all right like i said i'll, I'll run this with another one because it gets kind of goopy after after doing all of them not goopy Smudgy, smeary. Is that a word? I don't know. All right. And then I'll take just the regular clean cotton ball and do it again. And then I just make sure that there's, you know, nothing stuck anywhere else. And if the back of it's not sticky, like some of the softballs, some of the baseballs are super sticky. Uh, when you take them off, when you take the panels off, but these Rawlings balls are not very sticky at all, which is fine because I pin mine. I don't uh, rely on the sticky back of the pan of the baseball panel itself to stick down. All right, so now that I know that's all cleaned up and looking beautiful, these are now ready. So these are prepped and ready to go. So what I've done here is I have my panel builder template and I have done the placement stitches. And what these do is they stitch out the placement of where you're going to put the panels on top. So what I do is I pin them down. Let me show you how I do that. All right, so I take my hoop and I usually get some kind of lamp so I can, you know, see through it ish and flip this over and then you can see the outline of the panel. And then I just kind of, you know, line that up where it should go. And then once I get it where it's supposed to go, and I'll double check this, I'm just demonstrating. Once I get it where it's going to go, I put, I take a long uh, quilting pin and stick it in the hole down into the stabilizer, bring it up on the other side, and then just kind of gently poke around until I, until I bring it out uh, through another hole. So let me get this pinned up and then I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so once you have the... Let me flip that over so you can see. So I have it pinned at the bottom and pinned at the tops um, or left, right, depending on how you look at it. You can also um, tape the middle down if you want to, but I find it doesn't really stand up too much. I just kind of flatten it as we go. Um, but if you turn it around, you can see that it lines up perfectly with the interior uh, of the panel. So, but you need to be careful because if you shift your light source even a little bit, it skews. So make sure when you're looking at it, you're looking, you've got the light source straight on, you know, head on 
um, into what you're looking at. Because if you look at this one, you can see it looks like it's off. But if I move it over to where the, where the actual light is, you can see that it's perfectly on there. So just make sure you're looking at it, you know, and your shadows aren't shifting. You're looking at it head on. Now I've got the panels on my placement stitches. They're pinned down, they're ready to go, and we're gonna start embroidering. Now you can add a topper if you want to, but you don't have to. I don't find that on the baseballs they sink down too much. Now on the soft balls, yes, because the balls seem to be a lot softer on the top or on the panels than the baseballs. So I would definitely use a topper on the soft balls. Now I'm getting ready to lift up my foot before it moves because I didn't want it to catch underneath there. So that's why I was doing that. All right, so that panel is, well, the words for the panel is done. Once you're done with your design, you take it out of the hoop and, you know, trim up all your, your jump stitches if you have them and cut away the stabilizer. And then get those all nice and ready to put on the ball. All right, if you're like me and you have these pesky little, if you can see those, when you clip your jump stitches, you have those little pieces of thread that you can't get. Get you a lighter. And you just come close and singe, and they just singe right down. Don't leave it for too long because your ball is synthetic, so it will melt. And that's it. And just make sure you clip all your little threads and singe them up. All right, so here's where the fun comes in. Remember you marked on the back and you marked on your ball so they could match up. Now, sometimes the design covers your markings, but that's okay because I could just peek under there. I know that's the O and that's the X. And that's why I put very specific markings. This one doesn't have one and I know this one is the four. So that's why I put very specific markings so I know exactly where they belong. So we have that O and then we have the O here and then I can see the lines of the, where the panel was. So I'm gonna go back to my O and I'm gonna put that on there and just line it up and then just take one of my pins and you're gonna need a lot of pins. Well, you don't, but it's helpful. When I first started, I didn't use pins, and uh, I found it was much easier when you do. So, you take a pin, stick it right through the hole that's already there. Don't make a new hole. And I, I point my pin kind of up, so it pulls it just a little. You don't want to pull it too much, because you don't want to rip the, the lacing hole. But just so when you pull that way, it doesn't, it doesn't pull down. So then you just follow the lines where you drew 
and just go down, go around, and you'll you'll notice that it doesn't quite line up with the other side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pin a whole bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch. And then I'm going to pull, I'm going to stretch. Now it's hard to see that on the camera, but I'm just going to stretch. And as I stretch, I'm going to keep pinning everywhere I go. And I should have said I go this way when I'm pulling down. So go the op put your pins in the opposite way of which way you're pulling. So that way they don't come out. All right. You just want to keep pulling and keep pulling. Sorry, I have lots of hair everywhere because I lose hair like crazy. And you can even put the pin in and pull down. A little so like I'm putting the pin in and I'm pulling down so it stretches a little bit just be careful that you don't pull too hard because you don't want to rip the lacing holes and you just keep pinning just keep pinning 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 all the way and see how much closer that is now so by the time I get done pulling <clears throat> excuse me and pinning it will match up just great. All right, we got one panel done. And you can see that it matches up perfectly with the line. So use lots of pins as you go. Don't pull one pin too hard. I'm actually going to uh, end up putting some extra pins throughout. Let's do the last one. All right. So here's our ball, and you can see all the wonderful pins in it. And I like to start wherever the biggest gap is, so probably start here, only because I find that it helps close it faster, and then because the rest of it just kind of, you know, falls in line. So you can either just put this on your lap to work, which a lot of people do, or you can use something like this. Um, my husband made this one, but you can make one very, very easily. So if you're not uh, too good at keeping things in your lap, you just put it on the stand like this, and then you work as you go. So you're going to want some curved needles. Um, I mean, you can use needles like these. These are uh, upholstery needles. They're all upholstery needles. So you can use these. Uh, probably not these so much. That's, that's kind of big and that would probably rip a hole. But these or these, I would file down the sharpness first. Uh, but you can use those. I just prefer these. And these are the same ones that are on the, um, they're linked in the tutorial section of the website at embroideryonballs.com. And these are great. So you can use the bigger ones if you, you know, have dexterity issues and maybe you can't hold on to these small ones. They have really big ones uh, that are, this one's six inches, five inches, four inches, and three inches. So these are really great to use. And again, they're linked on the site. And I just use... The two smaller ones that's what works for me and then I use this flat waxed red cord which is also linked in the tutorial section of the website and we're gonna use 180 inches that's 180 for a baseball and I'm gonna cut that and we'll show you how to how to get it going all right once you have your string cut and this is I'm gonna double it uh, only because I find that it's stronger you don't have to, you can just do single. So in that case, uh, you would just use 90 inches. Or wrap the ball, uh, I think it's 10 times. I've heard some people do. So I'm just going to uh, double it up and I'm gonna take one end and thread it. All 
All right. And I'm not going to go all the way down. Uh, I'm only going about, I don't know, maybe about two thirds, two thirds of the way. And then I'm going to take the other side, which is the folded end. And I'm going to thread that. Which I'm not very good at threading needles at all, especially when they're large. So you can get a needle threader. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this. I guess you could do, move the other one all the way down and then thread it on the same end that you just threaded the other one. I don't know. Anyway, so, and then we'll put that one down. And then that way we'll have, you know, a nice double strand going on here. So you're not tying any knots. I'm going to move this back up to about a third of the way. So I have... I have each one, I have each needle a third of the way in, and we're gonna loop this through into the ball. And I'm gonna start in the larger, in the larger spot. The lines make a, an upward or a downward slant. Okay, so if these two lines were to touch, they would make a V, right? You want those that V pointing away from you. Okay, or up. You don't want it down when you're trying to relace them because they'll they'll be backwards and it'll look funny. So we're gonna start here. Let's see if I can find a spot that doesn't have the things on it. Only so I don't have to have the camera in my lap. And it's probably much easier just to do this in your lap. Um if I had if I had this, this is made to sit in my lap, so it's kind of awkward being this high, but we're going to go for it. Because if you look, it has a little stand on it. So that goes, my legs basically sit like this. Sorry, it's shaky. My legs sit like this. All right. So again, you see that these V's are going that way. And we want to follow that line. So I'm going to start, start down here and I'm taking the right one and putting it in the left side just to get it started. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter which one you put it in. All right. And you just want to clear that the end of your thread and then go right across and then put your right side in the right the right one which again it doesn't matter it was right when it started and now it's left so all right so you have it like that so you want to line not your needles you want to take the ends of your thread this one and this sorry it's hard to do this and hold and prop the camera all right, so you want to line up your threads, okay? And you're going to you're going to pull until you know that that's right in the center. All right, just like that. And then that way you know that both sides are even. All right. And then it's very simple left over right and pull tight, or left, then right, and pull tight. Well, I don't know, one of those sayings. But I always remember left, right, pull tight. So, and remember, don't pull it too tight on your first one because you'll pull that middle part out of whack. And normally I just, I just hook these like onto my clothes so I don't get them tangled. But the nice thing is, is this is hanging up so, or it's on a stand so it kind of hangs. And this is the right one, we're going this way. So you're just gonna alternate. 
stitches like that and pull tight, okay? Not too tight. And you don't want to ever pull this way. If you do, do it very loosely. But this is the way that you want to do. And what it does is it tightens up the one below it. Don't pull too tight because if you do, you'll rip these out. You can always go back later and, and you can use this guy. And you just go in and pull and then pull and then pull and then pull. And that way, if you need to, you know pull, you know, pull it a little bit tighter, you can. All right. So got my left one again. I'm going in the right. So this one now becomes my right. And this one is my right one. And I'm putting this over to the left. Again, I'm so sorry for hitting the camera and pull tight all right and you can see that that closes it up nice and tight and we're gonna do that all the way around all right now that we've got the whole ball stitched and I'm about to do my last stitch give me just a second still doing the left over right and pull tight All right, so once you got that in, what I do is I go up to the next, to the next one where we started. All right, so I did my right side and now I'm doing my left side, or I'm sorry, I went left, right, and then right, left. So I'm pulling up that last one and pulling it nice and tight. And then I'll clip these little, these little strings that come from underneath. Anyhow, so you're going to go right back over top. And this is how I do it. So I come down and you have to kind of wiggle it down in there. And I go down at least three. You can do more or less. It, it doesn't matter. It's really not coming out. And pull it down so it's nice and tight. And then you can either cut it off now or you can go a little bit more. I usually go a little bit more just because, just so I know it's nice and nice and in there and it's not going to pull out. So I'm going to go three more. That. And then you want to cut it off as close as you can and then just smush it underneath like that. And then you're going to do the same with the other side. Come up and down. And this time go to the second instead of going down to the third. This is where this curved needle really comes in handy. But remember, go one just above. So this is where this is where it's coming out, and you're gonna go just above in the center. And just pull, and then this one, like I said, you'll come out the second one instead of the third so it doesn't get too bulky and then just kind of line those up with the stitches that are already in place and then go back under and do two more or three or wherever it comes out because <laughs> you can always tuck it in it doesn't matter at this point Just be careful that you don't get a knot or anything in there. All right. And then cut that. 
that off and then just mush them in. Alright, and once that's done, then you have your beautiful ball. And then what I do is I go through I'm like all these silly stitches, well, strings rather, that pull out from the ball. If you catch them beforehand, you know, just, just clip them off, but you can mush them back down in there too. It's not a big deal. And then I take the ball and I kind of roll it on the seams just to kind of push the seams together a little more, but I think it looks pretty great. And that's how you make a baseball, an embroidered baseball. If y'all have any questions, let me know. Happy crafting.